Wisdom attend, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. The reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Let us attend. At that time, the infant Jesus was brought up to Jerusalem by his parents to present him to the Lord as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what he said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And inspired by the Spirit, he came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him, according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, and for the glory to thy people Israel. <clears throat> and Joseph and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is spoken against, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also. The thoughts out of many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years from her virginity and as a widow till she was eighty-four. <clears throat> she did not depart from the temple, worshiping and fasting and prayer night and day. Then coming up that very hour, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Oh. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, the Christ, is in our midst. <clears throat> With the celebration of this feast of our Lord and his presentation into the Jerusalem temple, we can have a better understanding and appreciation of a change that was beginning a transformation of the nature of worship through Christ's participation in the worship of the Old Covenant in keeping the law. Christ was brought to the temple in Jerusalem by his parents and was offered, met by Simeon the elder and the prophetess Anna, as we heard in the Gospel. It is a sign and beginning of the revelation of grace upon grace that was to come in the worship of the new covenant of Christ's blood as he becomes for all of humankind the perfect offering that saves and is for us today experienced in the Holy Eucharist the offering of his very body and blood, for which we offer thanks. Saint Simeon, who receives the Christ child offered by Mary and Joseph, blesses what becomes for us Christians our Eucharistic worship, our offering of thanks, that moves us beyond the old covenant sacrifices of burnt offerings, as we have been discovering in our Bible study each week on the book of Genesis, the human race had worshiped God with the thankful offering of sacrifices as an expression of fear. Bulls, goats were laid upon altars, offerings of grain, libations of wine were poured out by trembling supplicants before the powers of divinity. These offerings were only a percentage or a portion of their best possessions. However, it was a mere substitute for their souls, what we call offerings of thanksgiving and atonement through the fires of sacrifice. In the same way, on this day, we are presented with the image of the humble new parents from Bethlehem, who bring an offering of two doves, as we hear in Luke 2.24, and who offer their offering to the God of Israel. But something new happens that marks the end of an era of animal sacrifices and the beginning of a new covenant worship. From this feast, we learn the meaning of what is said in our offering of the bread and wine in the Divine Liturgy. Thine own of thine own we offer to thee. For the offering to God on this feast is God himself in the flesh and by what he accomplishes in his broken body and spilt blood belongs to him alone who in his own person establishes the reconciliation of God and man with the forgiveness of sins. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The Mother of God, who is the supreme figure, the icon of the church, and who also was presented at the temple by her parents, Zechariah and Elizabeth, on September the 8th, you may recall that feast, and who was received by the priest Zacharias and taken into the Holy of Holies now places Christ in the hands of the elder Simeon 
and receives him back again. It is a foreshadowing of our worship at every divine liturgy. Like Simeon, every Orthodox priest receives Christ into his hands under the form of the Amnos, the Lamb of God. When a priest is ordained, he is handed into his hand, into the palm of his hand, the Lamb, which is the offering of the Eucharist that becomes the body and blood. It is placed in the hand of the priest for him to pray and meditate behind the altar until the time for which it is broken and distributed through the cup of his blood. Like Simeon, therefore, every priest bears up Christ within the holy place at the altar with voice lifted up to bless the Most High God, as said in Luke 2.28. And like Simeon, the priest comes from the holy place to impart Christ back to the church to distribute his all-pure body and blood to the faithful for the forgiveness of sins and for life everlasting. In the one glorious moment of Christ's presentation at the temple, the righteous Simeon beheld the revelation of God's plan for salvation in the face of the 40-day-old child in his arms. He foresaw the end of blood sacrifices on altars of stone. He understood that the God who is the Son of God forever, lives to make intercession for us, as we hear St. Paul say in Hebrews 7, 25, to be both the offerer and the offering, the one who receives and is distributed to his people throughout the world. And having seen the revelation, Simeon believed and therefore spoke these words, quote, mine eyes have seen your salvation, a light for the revelation of the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel, Luke 2, 30 and 32. And so the scene of the presentation of Christ in the temple contains the very center of our New Testament worship. No longer do we come to God's temple in fear, bearing offerings of dead animals. Now we present a living sacrifice through the Eucharist in the person of the Son of God, who is with us whenever we are gathered together in his name. Matthew 18, 20 and 28, 20 and who is given back to us so that we too can become living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, as Paul, St. Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Consequently, each one of us becomes another Simeon when we receive Christ in the person of the poor and the needy, in the person of the sick and the dying, in the persons of widows and orphans, whenever, in other words, we receiving the least of our brethren as though they were Christ himself. It is our Eucharistic task, our offering of thanks, our good work, which is liturgia, liturgy after the liturgy, to embrace them, to bring them into the church, and to announce the good news of God's love, mercy, and forgiveness. In doing this, we transform every human encounter. We transform every meeting with another person as another part of our worship presentation of Christ in order that at the end of our life's calling, 
we too also are inspired to say, as Simeon did, my eyes have seen your salvation, O Lord. I have seen your light to the nations. I have seen the glory of your people, their consolation and their redemption. May Christ, our true God, who condescended to be carried in the arms of the righteous elder Simeon for our salvation, bless and strengthen us, our loved ones, those who are encountering us with their needs and remember us in his heavenly kingdom. Christ is in our midst.